So this is lesson 2.7 of our pre-calc 11 class. Unit 2 is called polynomials. Lesson 7 is called modeling equations. So these are our equivalent of story problems for the unit. Aren't you excited? Okay, what we're going to learn in this lesson is how to write equations to solve or model a problem. And we're also going to talk about how to use domain restrictions. Because when you're given a context, then there are certain x values that make sense in a context and certain x values that don't make sense. And I made these videos while watching a certain uh, TV show that had squares, circles, and triangles, so I went with that theme. We'll start with squares. This is a square inside of a square. Um, if you take a green square and you cut a green square out of the a hole out of the center, we get this shaded green region. The width of the square is 3x plus 4. The width of the whole square is 2x minus 3. Can you find an expression that represents the area of the green region? Hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to find the area of the big square, subtract the area of the whole square, as in the, the square that's the hole in the center of it. And we're going to say that represents the green shaded region. The whole area minus the little area is the green area. Here's the equation right here. If um, the area of a square is a side length squared, we get the big square squared, and we subtract the little square's area. This is a polynomial um, function that we can simplify. We can square each piece using box method. So the first, the big area squared looks like this. The little area, the little square's area looks like this. And we can subtract those two. We end up with this um, expression in standard form. The area is 5x squared plus 36x plus 7. Take a moment, pause the video, and make sure that all the steps up to this point make sense to you. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to talk about domain. Because um, we have um, x used in an expression to represent the size of a couple squares. For the big square, the sign of a square can't be a number that's negative. Because you can't take a ruler and measure something and get a negative measurement. It doesn't make sense. You could argue that you can get zero, a square with a sign length of zero, I guess you could argue that. I'm going to say no right now, but depending on how you interpret that, you put um, an equals two underneath this greater than. Um, but, but for sure, a sign length of a square could be positive. So I'm going to say that 3x plus 4, since it represents the side of a square, has to be a length that's greater than zero. Now that's an equation or an inequality that we can solve for x. If 3x plus 4 is greater than 0, we can subtract 4 from each side and divide each side by 3, and we can get x is greater than negative 4 thirds. So what that means is if uh, so long as if, if x equals negative 4 thirds, this would e this expression would equal 0. So as long as x is a number bigger than negative 4 thirds, then this expression would give us a positive value which is what we want, because it's the side length of a square. So we're going to say um, this is a domain restriction. A domain restriction. The little square inside also has to have a positive length, because that's if it has a zero length, it's not a square. And it's got a negative length, that doesn't make sense. You can't measure negative lengths on squares. So 2x minus 3 also has to be greater than 0, which means that x has to be greater than 3 over 2. So if I think of the x values that work for both side lengths of the squares, any number bigger than 3 over 2 is also going to work for um, the other, the bigger square, because this is more restrictive than the other domain restriction. Um, to say that backwards, 0, x equals 0, would work for the little square. No, sorry, not the big square. But it wouldn't work for the little square. We want the x values that work for both squares. Again, if you hear me talk about domain, you know I like to talk about tea parties. The domain restriction 
or all x values that are invited to both t parties. For 3x plus 4, only numbers greater than negative 4 thirds are invited to the t party. But for 2x minus 3, only numbers bigger than 3 over 2 are invited to the t party. Um, so the actual t party, we're only going to invite the guests on both lists, which means we're going with 3 over 2 or higher. So anyways, this would be our domain restriction. x has to be greater than 3 over 2. Let's try another one. That is the same one. Let's try another one. Okay, this one is uh, find the perimeter. So we have a rectangle with a, a length of x and a width of x plus 5. So the width is 5 units wider than it is long. The area of this rectangle is 300 centimeters squared. So we not only have the area, but we have the unit of measure. Can we find the perimeter? Well, we could write an equation or an expression for the perimeter. Length times width would be x times x plus 5. Um, sorry, no, that's not even. That would be the equation for the area. The perimeter would be um, x plus x plus 5 plus x plus x plus 5, all the way around. But because we're given the area, we can solve for x by writing an area equation. So if the area of this thing is 300, and area is calculated by length times width, we could say that 300 is equal to x times x plus 5, or x squared plus x5, 5, 5x, yes. Um, we could put this, um, this is a quadratic equation, we could write it in standard form, we can factor it, and we could find two solutions. Now, our domain restriction, x is the side length of the, of the rectangle, 15 makes sense. Negative 20 does not make sense for x. If x equals negative 20, then we have a length of negative 20. We can't have a negative length on the rectangle, so we omit x equals negative 20. Because it's outside of the domain for this context. And again, you can't have a negative um, side length. X has to be greater than 0. You can't have a negative width. So x plus 5 must be greater than 0, which means x is greater than negative 5. 0 is more restrictive than negative 5 is, so we're just going to kick out any numbers that, that are 0 or less. Now that we have the x value that makes sense for this rectangle, we know that x has to be 15, which means we have a 15 by 20 uh, rectangle. So we can add those side lengths up and get the answer is 70 centimeters. And we know centimeters because the area is given to us in centimeters, so we'll use that unit of measure. Another example, we're done with rectangles and or squares, we're on the circles. So we have a circle, uh, a blue circle with a circular hole cut out of the center of it. What's the area of the shaded blue region? Well, you know the area of the circle, the big circle, um, would be pi times the radius squared, and then the area of the little circle will be the same. Um, the radius of the little circle is r, so pi r squared is the area of this white region. Um, the area of the big circle, including the white region, would be, oops, too far, um, pi times a radius of r plus 3. If the radius of the little circle is r, we have r plus 3 to get the radius of the big blue circle. So pi times the quantity r plus 3 squared minus pi r squared would be the big circle minus the area of the little circle, which is um, quadratics that we can simplify. Yes, there's a pi on there, but we can treat pi, because pi is a number, we can treat pi like any other number. We'll just tack it on to our coefficient all the way. So r plus 3 squared, we can FOIL out, core box method. We can distribute the pi across. You notice we have some like terms. We have pi r squared at the front. We have minus pi r squared at the back. Those are like terms that are equal in every way, except one subtraction. So they basically cancel out. We're left with 6 pi r plus 9 pi. 
And you could factor out our greatest common factor of 3 pi, but you don't have to. Now, domain restriction. R has to be the radius of a circle. You can't have a radius that's negative. That doesn't make any sense. Oh! <sighs> Sorry, it's 6 a.m. I'm tired. Um, so the R has to be a number greater than zero, otherwise it's not a circle. So our answer is the area is 6 pi r plus 9 pi, but r has to be greater than zero. That's part of the solution. Okay, triangles. Find the exact length of d to b. Well, we don't know what x is, so we can't really solve for it, but we can put an expression in terms of x. To write up an equation, we're going to use um, it's a right triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem. If the short leg and the, and the long leg are, are, or the two legs of the triangle are A and B, and the hypotenuse is C, we could say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to say this term right here is A, and this is B. And it doesn't really matter which one you say. Where did my thing go? start the video over, but we're kind of invested at this point. Alright, so a squared plus b squared. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you call a and b, but the hypotenuse has to be c, or dv has to be c. If we square each of these side lengths, we're going to get um, 2x plus 1 plus 3x equals dv for this length squared which we can click like terms to get that 5x plus 1 equals db squared. We can square each side to see that the square root of 5x plus 1 is an expression that represents this side length. Now, we have three sides, or two sides over here, where we have an expression for x, which means we have a couple of domain restrictions that we have to check. You see, the length of any side of this triangle has to be a number greater than 0. So 2x plus 1 must be greater than 0. And I know technically uh, the square root of 2x plus 1 must be greater than 0, but if we square both sides, we get this anyway. So we can just make sure the radical is greater than 0. Or the radical can. So if we do that, um, x must be greater than negative 1 half. For the other side of the triangle, CB, 3x must be greater than 0, which means x must be greater than 0. This is more restrictive than the first side, or, or BC is more restrictive than CD. So we're going to go with this domain restriction between the two. We could check the third side because now that we have an expression for the third side, we know that this must be greater than 0, or 5x plus 1 must be greater than 0, which means that if we solve for x, x must be greater than negative 1 fifth. Well, 0 is still more restrictive than 1 fifth, so we're going to keep this domain restriction as the domain restriction for this triangle. So the answer is that dv is equal to the square root of 5x plus 1 such that x is greater than 0. Okay, here's another one. Um, and this problem is pretty much the same as the last problem. And now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to set up our equation. We're going to solve for the missing side. And we're going to check domain restriction on all three sides. For all three sides, the domain restriction is the exact same. x must be greater than 0. So that's going to be our domain restriction and our final answer. This one is a triangle. It's got the same setup with Pythagorean theorem, but the question is different. The question says solve for x. So what we're going to do is, once we set up the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to, let's see, we've got some box method to do here and here. Uh, we've got some collecting like terms, and setting equal to a polynomial or a quadratic in standard form. 
Um, we could divide each side by 2. We could factor that polynomial. And then we get two solutions, x equals 8 and x equals negative 3. Now we're going to omit negative 3 as an answer because of our domain restrictions. If we set each side as having to be greater than 0, we get x must be greater than 0. We get x plus 7 must be greater than 0, which means x has to be greater than negative 7. And we get 2x plus 1 must be greater than 0. So x must be greater than negative 1 half. The 0 is the most restrictive. So we're going to go with that as our domain restriction. And negative 3 is not greater than 0. Therefore, we eliminate negative 3 as an answer. The only answer is x equals 8. This problem right here is how it's going to be written on your quiz. So if you're going to study but you got short time, start with this one. Okay, here's another one. The area of the triangle is 6 centimeters. What is the perimeter? This is similar to that rectangle we did. We're going to find the area, we're going to set an equation with the area to solve for x. We've got a domain restriction, so we eliminate one solution. We're going to take that x and plug it in so we can calculate the perimeter. Since the, uh, oop, there's a typo here, that should be 6 centimeters squared. Oopsies. Anyways, because we're given in square centimeters for the area, we know that the unit of measure is in centimeters for the perimeter. 12 centimeters is the answer. Take a moment, read through this question, make sure it makes sense. Okay, this one's for fun. Uh, trapezoid. Write an expression for the area of the cross section. This probably isn't the only way to solve this question. This is the way that I saw how to do it. So if CD is a length of 36 centimeters, um, but we also have a length of x, which is the height of the trapezoid, we can write an equation in terms of x to represent the um, area of this thing. So because we have a 45 degree here and a right angle here, that means that this angle must be 45 as well. 45, 45, 90 triangle means that this side leg must be equal in length to x, which is also the height of the trapezoid. If the whole thing CD is 36, but this is x, and for a similar argument this is x, the remaining piece must be 36 minus x minus x, or 36 minus 2x. Now that we know that, we, can, we could find the area of each triangle, and then add the area of the rectangle. So it'd be x squared divided by 2 over here, x squared divided by 2 over here, that's a total of x squared, and then we get uh, 36 minus 2x times x, and then add that to the x squared and you get an answer. Um, if you simplify it, we should get the same answer as this over here. The way I did it was I used the formula for the area of a trapezoid. The formula for the area of the trapezoid is basically you find the bottom width and the top width, and you find the average of those two, and you multiply it by the height of the trapezoid. This is how that formula looks. The height of the trapezoid times base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. And I'm calling base 1 uh, the top, 36. And base 2 would be the AB, the bottom, 36 minus 2x. And I know AB is that because it's equal to the, the top part of this rectangle right here. So if I add those two things together and I divide them by 2, I get 36 minus x. And that represents the average width of the base 1 and base 2. Multiply it by height x, and you have your final solution. What I didn't write on here is a domain restriction. Uh, what does x have to be? What domain restrictions are on x? Well, x represents the height of the um, trapezoid, so x must be greater than 0. Um, we also made an expression, 36 minus 2x is the width of AB, so that must be greater than 0 as well. So 36 must be greater than 2x, which means 18 is greater than x, which means x has to be less than 18. So uh, this is an incomplete answer. We'd have to add that um, x must be between 0 and 18. 0 to 18. Numbers between that range are, are the domain restrictions for this.
context. All right? So hopefully that was fun for you. It was fun for me. I love doing math. There's no homework assignment for this uh, particular lesson on delta math, but um, there will be a question like the triangle one on the quiz. So study up.